Hey, welcome to a special edition of the Ben and Wally Show interview edition. What's up, Ben? Hey, what's up? Today, we're excited to have Jimmy Dykes with us. Jimmy's one of the best college basketball analysts in the nation, working for ESPN and the SEC Network. He played college basketball at the University of Arkansas under Hall of Fame coach Eddie Sutton. He was an assistant men's basketball coach at the University of Arkansas, University of Kentucky, Oklahoma State, Appalachian State, and that's just to name a few. He served as a college scout for the NBA Seattle Supersonics franchise for three seasons. He was the head women's basketball coach at the University of Arkansas from 2014 to 17. And Jimmy is now the author of the book titled, The Film Doesn't Lie, Evaluating Your Life One Play at a Time. So Jimmy Dykes, thank you so much for joining us on the Ben and Wally Show. We really appreciate your time today. When I was reading through your bio, one thing jumped out at me that I, we have to discuss before anything else. Matt Damon, Ben Affleck, Tiger Woods, Jimmy Dykes, all People Magazine's 50 most eligible bachelors in 2001. You've got to tell us how that impacted your dating game. Yeah, it must have been a really bad year, first of all, if, if I made the list of People Magazine's 50 most eligible bachelors, but it was... Yeah, that was a crazy time. I'm not even sure how I got nominated or how it all went down, but I got a phone call from him at one point, hung up on him initially. I thought it was one of my buddies playing a joke. And two months later, I was in People Magazine. So it was, uh, yeah, that was a crazy time, man. And, you know, back then there weren't cell phones or anything like that. There were still handwritten letters, and that's how you communicated with people. And I got a lot of letters mailed to me in Fayetteville, Arkansas. I can tell you that. And, uh, but that's not where I found my wife. I found my wife a couple of years later. Um, she was, uh, actually cheering at a basketball game. I was announcing for ESPN and we connected afterwards and God really just set our life, uh, to, together at the perfect time for her and the perfect time for me. And, and, uh, honestly, at first, first date we went out on, she said, I, I didn't want to go out with you initially because I saw that People Magazine article and I, didn't, I wasn't sure what kind of guy you were. So I said, well, that, that, I'm, I'm not a worldly guy. My, my, my faith is in, is in uh, my Lord Jesus Christ and I've been waiting for him to bring me the right one. And there we were a year later married. So, uh, but it was, <laughs> I still have it up on my wall. So a buddy had made me a copy of it it's up on my wall. It's a great conversation piece. So I guess it's a good way for us to get started with our podcast. So you ended up uh, playing basketball at Arkansas. So when you were growing up, uh, what sports did you play and, and how did that end up leading you to Arkansas? Yeah, I played everything as a, as a young boy growing up. I mean, whatever the season was, football, basketball, baseball, I ran track in the summer. I, I did it all. And I'm glad that I did. I think parents make mistakes these days of funneling their kids into one sport at a young age and the burnout factor, all those things I think start piling up on them. Uh, so I'm, I'm a big proponent of kids doing multiple sports growing up. Uh, when they get to their high school days, maybe at that point they start trimming that list down a little bit. I still like multi-sport athletes in, in, in high school as well. But uh, ultimately, I, I, I love college basketball and want to be a college basketball coach. And that's kind of what started me when I uh, played for um, Eddie Sutton in Arkansas, who, bless his soul, just passed away uh, just over a week ago now. So um, but it was, uh, yeah, I, I, and I still love every sport right now, man. I, our daughter's in gymnastics. She runs track. She, she runs cross country. She and I golf some in the summer together. Uh, so it's uh, sports, obviously, been, has been a really big part of my life. You said when you went to Arkansas that you already had a plan that you wanted to coach that was like in your mind when you went there. So you were thinking more coach than player long-term. Is that right? Uh, well, I think, I think I was very fortunate that I kind of figured out in my high school days what I wanted to do once I got out of college and I knew that I wanted to coach. So my college choice was based upon a, a lot, not only of, of being close to my home, but being under a coach in college that I could learn the game from. And there's none better in my mind than who I learned it from uh, in Eddie Sutton and the hall of fame, all those things 
back up my decision was a pretty good one because there's no way I'd be at ESPN if it wasn't for his, his influence on me. So uh, I'm just really thankful that God spoke to my heart at a at maybe a younger age in some people in terms of what I, I thought my path was going to be. And mm -hmm. it, it turned out, it, it has turned out really well for me. Well, part of your experience there, and I, I wanted to touch on this because The Last Dance came out, even more attention on Michael Jordan. Part of your experience at Arkansas in 1984, your number 15 Arkansas Razorbacks defeated the then undefeated North Carolina Tar Heels with nine McDonald's All-Americans, including Michael Jordan. What memories do you have from that game? Yeah, it's a special day uh, for the state of Arkansas. Uh, the unusual part of that game was that we had to actually – fly into uh we played the game in pine bluff arkansas on a sunday i think is a noon tip and we had to fly in sunday morning because we had a game saturday in dallas against smu and weather delayed us from flying in there saturday night so we flew in the morning of the game which is that's not the norm at all that's that's highly unusual for that to take place and probably landed about an hour and a half before tip off mm. so we had very little preparation very little scouting we just went out and played the game and it was an unbelievable game. We won the game based on the last second shot. Uh, they were a great team. We had a really good team as well. They had a Hall of Fame coach in Dean Smith. We had a Hall of Fame coach in, in Eddie Sutton. And uh, it, was a, it was a phenomenal game to watch, phenomenal game just to be a part of as a player, uh, to, to, to see what that did for Arkansas basketball, to knock off the number one team and a traditional great program like North Carolina really established Arkansas basketball back in the time back then that Arkansas was as good as anybody in the country. You know, you and I are from the same decade. So sports today, though, aren't like, at least where I grew up, like if you were an athlete and you went to tryouts, well, there's a good chance you're going to make the team. Today's sports for youth are so much different. So what do you like about today's youth sports and maybe what don't you like? Yeah, I think it's the level that you're at, you know, because um, I know now there are teams that are select teams. You have to try out all those things. And there's other – I know that just in the Arkansas area, there's also leagues that are, you know, kind of for everybody. So the good part of that is for, for kids that are maybe a little bit, a little bit more advanced and pro progressed in, in where they are, uh, you now have maybe a little level playing field, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Uh, but the, the, the negative of it, I think, is what really concerns me. I think families are out of balance. I think they're out of balance with their time. I think they're out of balance with their commitment to, to a single sport and all the hours and all the money spent and all the travel. Uh, I hear from a lot of dads that one of the biggest, biggest stress moments in their family is just all the stress they're putting on themselves during the summer with travel ball, whether it's soccer, baseball, softball, basketball, whatever, they're just wearing themselves out chasing this thing called sports. Uh, so I see some real concern there and I appreciate dads that have kind of taken a step back and trying to reel that back in and, and get more of a life balance, eternal perspective in what they're doing and how they're leading their families. Mm -hmm. No, I, I agree. And I will tell you, it was maybe about a year and a half ago, I, be I believe it was, I was watching a Kentucky Vanderbilt game. And during the game, they played a portion of a song called Rockin' Little Heartbeat with Jimmy Dykes on lead vocals. So could you tell us a little bit about, you know, was music going to be your career at some point? And what role does music play in your life today? Yeah, I, I, I don't know if it's going to be my career at some point. I love, I love music. I love country music. Had some buddies in Arkansas that had a really good band, and I, I had spent some time in uh, a couple of back-to-back -back summers. I was scouting for the Seattle Sonics at the time as a college scout in the NBA, so I had a kind of had an off-season there. The game has changed now. There is no off-season in basketball, uh, but I, I pursued that for a, a couple of years. I actually moved to Nashville, wrote a lot of songs, had a lot of songs uh, re recorded by a music producer over there. Uh, but it's about the same time that my ESPN career was really starting to take off. So I moved back to Arkansas, became an athletic director at a private Christian school here in Arkansas and uh, began my journey with ESPN. But um, and I love those two years. And uh, I spent a lot of time in Nashville, lived there for about 10 months, uh, made some great contacts and great friends. I'm a big fan of music. I think it speaks to people. I'm a big fan of Christian music right now, but uh, if I'm not listening to Christian music in my in my truck, I'm listening uh, to country music. 
our, our family loves it. And uh, I didn't make it as a country music singer, but I have great respect for the people that do because it's a hard, hard business to break into. And that Nashville community is loaded with talented songwriters, musicians, musicians, singers. Uh, a lot of my a lot of my good friends are still over there today that have made it, still trying to make it in some capacity. Uh, but it, it certainly surprised me that night when ESPN, uh, the truck, found that song and, and played it played it on national TV. It, it was a surprise to me. I had no idea. It certainly had a, a, a it resonated with a lot of people that night for two or three days, and it, I had a lot of fun with it. So, uh, but that's those days are behind me. I I've lived a really blessed life. You've mentioned some of the things I've been able to do, but at at, at the heart of it, obviously, has been uh, college basketball and those doors have just really been open for me to do a lot of things, hopefully have an impact on people's lives. Um, that, that's, I think that's why the, the book right now has generated a lot of momentum with people because they see me as someone with a, with a really cool job. I think ESPN is a great place to work. Uh, so that's given me a platform to obviously try to impact people in, in a much greater way than just being someone who talks about college basketball. Will there be college basketball in 2021? And if so, what do you think it will look like? Yeah, I'm sure hoping it is. You know, I think we're all kind of a day to day. We're hoping that college football gets going and then kind of have a little bit of normalcy there. I, I think we will. I think it'll look different. I think there could be a lot of games played with no fans. And, and I think it'll have a different feel to it. But I think it's a part of our uh, healing process that our country is going to have to just at some point go through and keep moving forward. And, Certainly sports is a big part of it. So uh, you recently wrote your book, The Film Doesn't Lie. So um, with your book, uh, what was your inspiration for it? And like, who is it for? Kind of just... Yeah, the inspiration was just out of obedience to what God uh, was speaking into my heart at the time. Uh, to take the time to put into words a challenge for people to pause and, and reflect and create space in your heart to really challenge himself in some key areas I think we all need to deal with and look at in life. And I wrote, I wrote that thing over a couple of off seasons and it came out this past March. It's been in the hands of a lot of people across the country. I'm seeing a lot of people uh, with their, with their life being chained with God speaking to their heart about certain areas of their life uh, and the power that comes through a, a deeper, more authentic, obedient walk with Jesus. And, I think it's a fabulous book for, for Father's Day right now, for any dad that loves sports uh, and also is pursuing a walk with God. I think it's a perfect gift for that time right now where we are. Uh, but it was, a, it was a real challenge for me to write it. as a, I've never been, been an author. I didn't use a ghostwriter. I wrote every single word in the book. So it was a really, uh, it challenged my heart as I wrote it. I know it's challenging readers as they read it. Awesome. Before we finish, you do not have to answer this question. So we have a segment when it's just the two of us where it's called One Awkward Question, where we ask sort of the other person a difficult question to ask. If you don't want to answer it, it will be deleted. It will be no record of this ever. You have my word for that. But Ben, go ahead and ask the question. We'll see if Coach Dykes uh, wants to answer this. So if you could only work with one play-by-play -play person for the rest of your career, who would it be? Uh, it would be whoever's doing the biggest game that night. <laughs> okay spoken like a true politician and someone who doesn't want to make everyone angry around him <laughs> coach dykes true honor to talk to you we really appreciate you taking the time to talk to Thank us you. today um all the best with your book success and and uh hope you and your family are doing well yeah your listeners if they want to copy that book uh they can go to my website coachjimmydykes.com and that's the only place that you can go buy a copy of the book and then i actually take the time to write a personal note and autograph it. And uh, it's, it, that's, that's the only place you can buy it at Barnes and Noble, Amazon, all those places, but coach Dykes.com where you can actually get an autographed copy. So I really appreciate you guys having me on. You got a, you got a good vibe about your podcast right now. It's a good thing you guys are doing together. So thank you very much for inviting me. Thank you so much. Okay, guys, have a good one. All right. Bye-bye.